What's up guys? It's Matt. Uh, just gonna shoot a quick video here. Uh, I promised a while back, I think it was like my first or second video where I said I wanted to do a video about how my orientation went. Uh, so this was way back in uh, April, like the end of April is when I had mine. So uh, today I just was going through some stuff and I came across my um, orientation kind of uh, itinerary from that day. So uh, just do a quick video on that. Um, so basically uh, mine was about four hours long. Uh, I think it was from like 12.30 to 4.30. Uh, so one thing I guess that was was cool about it was, you know, it really is, that was like your first opportunity to meet the people who you're basically going to be with a lot for the next two years or however long your program happens to be. Mine's five semesters because the summer between first year, second year, we do do clinical rotations. So, uh, but yeah, so we had just introductions. Uh, you know, it was just basically uh, the academic director and the clinical director basically reintroducing themselves. We'd kind of, you know, met both of them already, but it was more of a formal introduction, I guess, for the, the cohort. And uh, then after that, they introduced uh, our dean for the health-related professions at my uh, school. So uh, I had actually met him informally uh, a while back at one of our, uh, we had to do a special orientation for anyone entering a health-related profession. It was like a part of the checklist as a prerequisite. So I met him informally at that. He was sitting in. Um, uh, so I kind of knew who he was. Uh, definitely, you know, if you don't know who your uh, dean of your college is or, or the programs in which your college falls under, you know, especially at a smaller college or community college, definitely you can reach out. Those guys are usually pretty accessible. Um, after that, we met uh, Jeff, our academic director, came back up, I guess, and that's where we really started talking about, hey, what is respiratory therapy? You know, that's where we watched uh, those AARC videos. I've linked it in a couple of the descriptions uh, on some of my videos for that uh, life and breath video. So we kind of watched part of that. Uh, basically, for anyone who, who was still kind of unsure, but I feel like you're, you're pretty far in if, you, if you're at orientation. You're still not really sure what you're getting into. Uh, in terms of the job, like I said, I, I'm just like a research nut, so I'm gonna read and read and read until I'm tired of reading about it. Uh, but yeah, really, he introduced and you know a little bit of uh, their personal experience. Both the academic and clinical directors are both registered respiratory therapists. Have both worked in the field prior to coming to academics, so um, that was kind of a unique perspective. And then uh, so after that, they had a like a representative or liaison um, from a four-year institution. Uh, basically, my program, it works very closely to one of my in-state uh, universities, uh, and they offer the opportunity for, for respiratory therapy anyway, um, a 90-30 split. So most traditional two-year to four-year programs, you can only transfer like up to 64 or 68 credits, something like that. Uh, but this program allows 90 credits to be transferred from a two-year junior college up to the university. So realistically, that means in one year after graduating, you could get a bachelor's degree. Um, and the other cool thing is that it, optionally, if you want to, you can actually do this concurrently. Now, as difficult as these programs are I, it's not impossible but you know definitely you need to be pretty f squared away I think if you're gonna get away with that so um, but that again it's neat though so if you can handle the workload uh, of the of the two-year program and then go to basically online courses uh, at the bachelor level, a 300 and 400 level at the same time, like absolutely, like that's a, uh, 
hell of an opportunity. So I don't think I'm going to be doing that just because uh, I want to make sure uh, I just really focus and get, uh, get through what's at hand first before I worry about the bachelor's thing. So eventually I would like to do that. Um, so after that, we met with, uh, uh, we have a program called Job Path. Uh, it's a economic development center, kind of a nonprofit who, uh, you know, I guess to supplement maybe anyone who, who's qualified for, for financial aid through FAFSA or anything, you can optionally go through whoever your local economic development centers is and they choose certain uh, careers uh, and programs and they offer supplemental help. Um, what's neat is it's not necessarily income based either. So, you know, FAFSA, you know, you, it's, it's usually, Hey, how much did you make last year? So how they assess it. These guys kind of look, they look back, but they also look ahead. Like, what are you going to face? Are you having to quit your job or cut hours in order to complete this program? And how can they help? Um, my wife actually had them through nursing school, and uh, she never re didn't really have to utilize them. Like, like we, we were pretty steady, I guess. Um, but they would do things as simple as like send you a gas card, you know, twenty five bucks or twenty five dollar um, grocery store card, you know, just just to be a part of the program. But I, I've heard them do as much as pay someone's like rent or mortgage payment in a month if there was a month where something happened or if your car broke they would they would fix your car or pay part of the bill or something uh so if that's something you'd be interested in definitely like look into it uh, your school should have that resource for you at least to contact so um after that we just took a break uh so that that was about two hours in uh it's a quick break use the bathroom they had like snacks and water and stuff for us so kind of talk uh, right after the break was the student panel. So this is where we got to meet the first years going into their summer. So these are the guys who are basically leaving where we're going into. Uh, and so that was awesome. The whole co cohort was there. You know, they got to each kind of tell us who they are and, and what they're doing, uh, what led them to restorative therapy. But then also we got an opportunity for like an open forum where we just got to kind of uh, hammer them with questions just everything from study habits you know to balancing work and school or uh, uh, anyone doing that dual enrollment with the with the four year program and so it, that was really awesome to talk to those guys uh, uh, and really really see how you do you kind of get the idea everyone's pretty individual in terms of how they they function best you know some people do do better in group study some people study better by themselves um so there's no real golden answer it's basically what they said you know just do what works best for you um that's the most important thing so um let's see then after that we let me see here uh we talked all to the the lady who handles all the the final um uh, admissions, you know, she's the one who actually registers us. She's the one who verifies. Uh, that was just a really short. She talked to us for five minutes. Just uh, she actually handles all admissions for all health-related professions. So I imagine she's fairly uh, swamped right about this time of the year. Uh, then we got to talk to the clinical director. So he came on and gave his big spiel about uh, the, the the clinical information where we operate, how we operate. Um, this is where we got into the fine details of the scrubs, the shoes, stethoscopes, um, you know, their expectation of us as well as, um, you know, uh, what we should come to expect uh, to experience. So that was, uh, that was cool. You know, that's where we learned about our, uh, I needed seal blue. We do wear our scrubs every day uh, to class and clinical. Uh, the big thing, and this wasn't a shock to me, uh, but anyone with visible tattoos or piercings, uh, tattoos have to be covered. Piercings can't be, uh, you know, extreme. I guess 
I, I'm used to that. I have tattoos on my arm, so I kind of figured I'd have to cover those. And then, uh, even the earrings I'm wearing currently, these guys, um, are considered too extreme, uh, so I'd have to go back to a little stud or something, or even just take them out, which is fine. I, I take them out now daily for my current job, so again, not a shock to me, but something to expect. Uh, then after that, uh, we basically turned in all of our initial paperwork, uh, so they collected everything, and uh, yeah, that was that. You know, it, it was funny because a lot of us were shocked, a ton of us were ready. Uh, with everything, I mean, immunization proofs and everything to turn in, and uh, then they're like, "Oh no, no, no!" You know, we upload that to to Castle Branch, the certified profile thing. So, uh, we're like, oh, okay. So a lot of us are just basically way ahead of the game because most of that stuff's not due until the first day of class. Uh, so it just means we're we're extra prepared. So, uh, but that was that was orientation for me. I definitely think uh, orientation, if your program does one, which I imagine they do, uh, is certainly a uh, your mileage may vary. You know what I went through and what we did is could be completely different. Uh, but just to get an idea of what to kind of expect if you're going through uh, really any health-related profession, but mine specifically pertains to respiratory therapy. So, anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Definitely uh, comment. You know. Uh, I like to respond, I like to see the comments and, and meet other new students and, and, and current therapists and stuff, so uh, you know, definitely comment, and uh, I will be doing more videos, so uh, uh, I will be doing a shoe video, I did get my shoes on Monday, so I will be doing one on my shoes here in the next uh, week or so, so uh, if you want to stay in touch, definitely subscribe too, and thanks for watching guys, have a great day, bye.